Hi there everybody and welcome back to ASFC Chemistry. In this video I'm going to take you through all the alcohol oxidation reactions as well as some general structural features of the alcohols themselves. Check the timestamps in the video description if you want to go straight to a specific part of this video right now and you can also click the eye to the top right hand corner of the screen to see links to our other videos on the alcohol functional group. Otherwise, let's get started. Before we jump into the reactions, we're going to need to know the difference between primary, secondary and tertiary alcohols. Primary first then. Classic example of a primary alcohol is ethanol that you can see to the top left hand corner of the screen right now. Ethanol is an example of a primary alcohol because the carbon that is directly bonded to the oxygen of the OH group is itself only bonded to one other carbon atom, directly. Now, the other two molecules on screen are also good examples of this. They're drawn in a mixture between skeletal and structural formulae, but you should still be able to notice that the carbon which is directly bonded to the oxygen of the OH functional group in each of these molecules is itself only bonded to one other carbon directly. There may be other examples of carbons further down the chain, and of course with two of these there are, but the immediate carbon atom that is bonded to the OH functional group is itself only bonded to one other carbon directly, and therefore two H atoms directly. Now we know what a primary alcohol is, what we can do is draw the easy comparison to what makes a secondary alcohol. A secondary alcohol is when the carbon which is directly bonded to the oxygen of the OH functional group is itself only bonded to two other carbon atoms directly, and therefore one H atom directly. Propan-2-ol is the simplest example of a secondary alcohol that we can actually draw. Here we can see that the carbon that is directly bonded to the OH is bonded to a CH3 in one direction and a CH3 in the other direction as well. It's also bonded to a hydrogen, so that's two other carbons directly and one hydrogen directly, making propantuol the easiest example of a secondary alcohol. The other structures you can also see on screen now are also examples of secondary alcohols, including that cyclic example which is often overlooked. That leads us nicely into the tertiary alcohols. However, this is really the only time that we're going to examine them inside this video, since they don't oxidize like the primary and secondary alcohols do. So what makes a tertiary alcohol? Well, once again, we need to consider that carbon, which is directly bonded to the oxygen of the OH functional group. If that carbon is itself directly bonded to three other carbon atoms and no hydrogen atoms directly, then we've got a tertiary alcohol, with the simplest example of a tertiary alcohol being that of 2-methylpropan-2-ol. You've got some other examples of tertiary alcohols on screen now. What I recommend you do is have a close look at their structures and have a look for how that carbon, which is directly bonded to the oxygen, is itself also bonded to three other carbon atoms directly. Now that we've encountered the different classifications of alcohol functional group, we're going to look at the oxidation reactions of the primary and secondary alcohols. Now in order to do these oxidation reactions, we're going to need an oxidizing agent. And it's quite literally something that we add to the alcohols in order to get that functional group to change into something else. For example, primary alcohols can be oxidized to something called an aldehyde, and we'll look at the structure of that shortly. So what's the name of our oxidizing agent? Well, it's called acidified potassium dichromate and has the formula H plus slash K2Cr2O7. The acid is actually sulfuric acid, and it's represented in the formula by that H plus. The slash that comes after it doesn't mean instead of, it actually means with. And organic chemistry is just a bit quirky like that. The potassium dichromate part of the name is represented clearly in the formula by the K2Cr2O7. Instead of potassium, you actually can use sodium dichromate. And you can sometimes see that in some of the older past papers as well. 
if an oxidation reaction has taken place utilising the acidified potassium dichromate, then we would notice a colour change of orange to green. The way I like to remember that is with OMG, orange makes green, and it's the colour change that we observe whenever an oxidation reaction has taken place using acidified potassium dichromate. Now all of that formula doesn't get put into our reaction equation that we're going to draw for when we need to show the oxidation of our alcohols. We're not going to put the alcohol reacting with H plus slash KT, all of that. Instead, in the reaction equations, to keep things simple and to focus on the organic molecule, since this is organic chemistry, we're just going to use an O in square brackets to represent our oxidizing agent. You'll see examples of this very shortly in this video, so don't worry about it. What I want you to focus on right now is, we're going to be doing the oxidation of primary and secondary alcohols, and the way we do that is with specific reaction conditions and the use of an oxidizing agent of acidified potassium dichromate. So what are our reaction conditions? Well, we need to look at either using a distillation or a reflux and these are apparatus that you are expected to be able to draw. So let's have a close look at these setups. On screen now, you can see our first example of organic chemistry apparatus, and it's actually assembled using something we call quick fit. We've got a round bottom flask, which is connected via a tube with a side arm that's got a thermometer in the top to a condenser. And out the bottom of the condenser, you can see that our product would be collected in a small conical flask. A condenser is a straight glass tube surrounded by a water jacket. Once connected to a cold tap, the condenser will cool any substance passing through it and it should cause gases to condense. Our reaction mixture gets placed in the round bottom flask and that is then heated. Remember that our reaction mixture is going to be our starting organic molecule. For example, in this case, it would be a primary alcohol and it's going to be placed in there with the oxidizing agent that we've just encountered called acidified potassium dichromate. So how do I define what a distillation is? Well, a distillation is the heating of a substance where all vapor products released are cooled, condensed and collected immediately in that conical flask just to the right hand side. You can see that we have a thermometer at the top of this apparatus as well and that thermometer is an absolutely crucial part of this apparatus setup since distillations have to be done at a very specific temperature. You can also see that the condenser has got the water flowing in at the bottom and out at the top. You are expected to be able to label that up and you are expected to be able to provide all the other labels along with an actual diagram of what you can see on screen now. So it might be a good idea to get practicing with this. One thing you should definitely look for in your actual practice diagram is that you've got an open system. What that means is you can draw with your finger a clear line from your reaction mixture up, along and out of the condenser. Make sure that you've got no horizontal lines cutting that pathway off and therefore you have got an open system. It's actually really rare to see a distillation at A-level. We only use it for one of our oxidation reactions and that's for when primary alcohols get oxidized to form aldehydes. The only other time in the A-level that you need to remember that a distillation can be used is actually a redistillation, which is a separation technique that we cover towards the end of module four. Otherwise, it's all about the next type of apparatus. Now for all the other oxidation reactions that we're going to study in this video, so that's primary alcohols going to carboxylic acids, or secondary alcohols going to ketones, and even aldehydes that I haven't even mentioned properly yet going to carboxylic acids. Well, all of those oxidation reactions use the same oxidizing agent of acidified potassium dichromate, and all of those oxidation reactions will take place in a reflux apparatus setup. And a reflux apparatus is just like the one you can see on screen now. And again, like the last apparatus for distillation, you are expected to be able to draw and label this apparatus. So how is it different? Well, you can see we've still got our round bottom flask and our reaction mixture will go into that flask 
So we've got our oxidizing agent and whatever we want to oxidize inside the round bottom flask. And just like last time, it's heated. But this time the condenser is directly connected to the round bottom flask, meaning that any vapors that try and leave the round bottom flask are gonna reach the condenser, get condensed and return to the reaction vessel. In words, we can describe a reflux as the continuous heating and reheating of a substance where all vapor products released are cooled, condensed and returned to the reaction vessel for further reaction. It's a very common setup to use a reflux in organic chemistry. You'll notice that there's no thermometer in the top because we don't want to close the system. And just like last time, if you're drawing this and you're getting a bit of practice with it, you must make sure you've got no gaps in your glassware, but you have got an open system where you can draw a clear line with your finger from the reaction mixture up and out of the top of the condenser. You shouldn't have any horizontal lines cutting off your pathway. The one you can see on screen now is perfect for use in the exam, just like the distillation was. Now that we've encountered the different types of apparatus, let's have a look at the structures of the products of these oxidation reactions. So let's introduce the aldehydes and ketones. On the left is propanal, and it would be synthesized from the primary alcohol propanol. On the right is propanone, and it would be synthesized from the secondary alcohol propantool. Propanal is an aldehyde, propanone is a ketone. You can only get an aldehyde from a primary alcohol like the propanol, and you can only get a ketone from a secondary alcohol like the propanol. They've both got a carbon double bonded to an oxygen as part of their structure. However, for the aldehyde, that carbon, which is double bonded to the oxygen, is always at the end of a chain. And for the ketone, that carbon that's double bonded to the oxygen is always between two other carbon atoms. So it's a very subtle difference between the two. Make sure you don't forget that. Just to reiterate what you're going to see later on in this video, if I want to make an aldehyde, I need to oxidize a primary alcohol under distillation. And if I want to make a ketone, I must oxidize a secondary alcohol under reflux. On screen now is another possible oxidation product, but only from the primary alcohols or the aldehydes. If I want to create a carboxylic acid like propanoic acid, I would need to oxidize either a primary alcohol, namely propanol, under reflux conditions, or I would need to oxidize an aldehyde, namely propanal from the previous slide, also under reflux conditions. I cannot get a carboxylic acid from a secondary alcohol or a ketone. It's likely you've seen a carboxylic acid group before. It's always at the end of the chain and it's when you have a carbon atom that's double bonded to an oxygen and that same carbon atom is also single bonded to an OH. Let's start looking at reaction equations then. On screen now you can see two equations that both represent the oxidation of the primary alcohol ethanol. They both use the ethanol molecule reacting with an O in square brackets. Remember that the O in square brackets doesn't mean oxygen, it means oxidizing agent. And our oxidizing agent, remember, is called acidified potassium dichromate, and it has the real formula of H plus slash K2Cr2O7, but we represent it in reaction equations just as an O in square brackets. Do not write H plus slash K2Cr207 in a reaction equation. Just use this little O in square brackets. Now in this first equation, you can see the ethanol is being oxidized and it forms ethanol. Now ethanol is a classic example of an aldehyde molecule. And we also see a molecule of water getting made in this reaction. That first reaction will have taken place under distillation conditions. And I can tell that that's the condition set taking place because the primary alcohol becomes an aldehyde. In the second reaction equation, however, we can see that we've got our ethanol reacting with two moles of our oxidizing agent. So there's a two there in front of the O in square brackets. And our product is ethanoic acid. So that's a carboxylic acid product. And we still also have some water. 
You'll notice a lot that when the alcohols react, one of the products that gets made is water, so keep an eye out for that. Back to the reaction, however, if I want ethanol to become ethanoic acid, then I would need to perform this oxidation reaction under reflux conditions. So the first reaction you can see on screen now is an oxidation reaction that takes place in a distillation apparatus setup, and the second reaction would take place in a reflux apparatus setup. On screen now you can see another example of primary alcohols getting oxidized to form an aldehyde or carboxylic acid respectively. And the reason I'm giving you this example is because I want you to focus on how the rest of the molecule past that carbon with the OH functional group in the alcohol doesn't change. The only thing we change about the molecule is the activity around the carbon with the OH functional group. We leave the rest of the molecule alone. So propan-1-ol becomes propanal, and the rest of that chain that was elsewhere in the molecule hasn't changed. So again, these reactions would be done under distillation and reflux conditions respectively because of the types of products I'm making, but I really want you to focus on this slide and the one previously on how the rest of the molecule doesn't change. We only change the molecule around that functional group. Leave the rest alone. Moving on to the secondary alcohols, and when I oxidize a secondary alcohol using acidified potassium dichromate as my oxidizing agent, same as last time, what I end up with is a ketone. So a ketone is my organic product from the oxidation of a secondary alcohol. I can't get a carboxylic acid and I can't get an aldehyde. I can only get ketones from secondary alcohols. Similarly, I can't get a ketone from a primary alcohol. Primary alcohols, as you've seen on the previous slide, can only become carboxylic acids and aldehydes. So this ketone product is exclusive to the oxidation of the secondary alcohols. You can also see that I'm using the Owen square brackets once again in these reaction equations, and I'm still producing that molecule of water, which I said is a common feature of when the alcohols react in this topic. Just below the propan-2-ol reacting to form propan 2 own you can see that there's actually a cyclic example, where cyclohexanol is reacting to form cyclohexanone. Don't be thrown off by the fact that it's cyclic. Don't change the ring, leave the ring alone, just change the functional group as I described on the previous slide. Just to reiterate as well here, the reaction conditions for oxidizing a secondary alcohol to form a ketone are every time, all the time, a reflux. The final oxidation reaction that we're going to study in this video is oxidizing an aldehyde, which actually isn't an alcohol at all, of course. But I actually can oxidize an aldehyde using the exact same oxidizing agent of acidified potassium dichromate that I've been using all the way through this video if I was to heat the aldehyde with the oxidizing agent in reflux conditions, and it would form the carboxylic acid. You'll notice in this reaction equation there isn't any water product, because I'm not using that alcohol at the start, and there's only one mole of the oxidizing agent being used. That's it for part one of this online lecture series of alcohols. Click the links on screen now, or click the eye to the top right hand corner of the screen to be taken to other videos on alcohol chemistry. Until next time, happy revising.